Hello class. Today I'm going to go over GMC, female genital mutilation, or better known as female circumcision. Now, the individuals who do this, sometimes religious people, they do it as a rite of passage. Others, this is a hor horrific way of life. All in all, this procedure, if you want to call it that, impairs women's sexual and reproductive functions. Now, I want you to go on to the second slide of the PowerPoint, if you have it up, where this can be found. Now, this can be found all over the world. However, I'm going to stay on topic with Africa for this moment. Now, the places in red are the highest places where this can be found. Places that are in the lighter gray, this is going to be rarely found. However, it's still done. And the places in the darker gray, this is where there's no data available. So, there could be, mo more than likely, there are cases of this. Now with that said, this does happen all over the world. This happens in Europe, this happens in Australia, this happens in America. This happens in 10,000 girls in America. Roughly immigrants, however, this still happens. Place, there are some places such as California, Texas, Illinois, um, Tennessee. These places have actually made it a crime to practice this procedure. Now, along with these four states, there are 15 in all who have done this. With that said, the other states have not. So, you can imagine how many that are not recorded, that there's no data on these states that this happens. Now, <clears throat> I want you to go on to slide three. Th these are the utensils you'll roughly see what done with this procedure. Now, these are favored in many African villages. However, these are the better utensils used. <sighs> utensils that are more than likely used all the time are going to be kitchen knives, um, rusty razor blades, scissors, broken pieces of glasses, and canned lids. Lids such as from coffee cans. These are all used for this procedure. Now, I want to point out that this is done without anesthetic. This is not done in a hospital bed. This is not even done in a hospital. This is done on the ground. It's done in shacks. And during this procedure, um, whoever is going through this, their mother, their family, people they know, hold them down while this is be being done. These people aren't being put to sleep while this procedure is going on. They're awake and they're being held down by their family members. I want you guys to go on to the next slide. Um, what you're going to see is a picture of the vagina. Now this is a healthy vagina. This is a functioning vagina. This consists of the, clit the clitoris, the clitoral hood, the labia majora, the labia minora, the urethra, and the opening of the vagina. This is a healthy functioning vagina. It has all the parts and all these parts are needed. There is a purpose that all of these hold. Now, female circumcision is made up of three different procedures. Um, click on to the next slide and I will go over the first one. So type one procedure is the removing of the clitoral hood and the clitoris. This is done by grabbing the clitoris and cutting it with a razor blade. This is mainly prevents any woman from having any sexual gratification. This is done so women do not become unfaithful to their husbands. That's the only reason why men feel that this is a needed procedure. Go on to slide number six and we'll go over the next form of this. So type two is the next procedure and I'm using that very leniently. It's not a procedure. Um, this part, the entire clitoris is removed along with the clitoral hood and the next step is taking out the labia minora. It's taking out the inner lips. Um, this is scraped clean and it, they just leave it like this. We're going to go on to the next one. Type 3 is the final stage. This takes out all of the reproductive or all of the pieces of the original healthy vagina, it takes them all out. It takes the clitoris out, the clitoral hood, the inner lips, the inner 
tissue of the outer lips and after that the woman is sewn shut with an opening about one third of an inch. This blocks the urethra um, and it's only big enough for menstrual and bodily functions to flow out. Now the next picture is one that is done. This is a real picture. This one is done probably by the 10% of doctors who do it in the entire world. Only 10% of doctors actually perform this procedure in the entire world. This is probably one of them. I still want to stress this is not good. This causes so many medical problems and this is probably the best image you will ever see. Every other image, if you want, would go to look it up. It's not. It's never going to look like this. The only reason I chose this one is that it didn't show so much horrific cutting, mutilating, and it was actually one that I thought would be presentable. This, the final product for every every other woman who goes through this, it's going to be done with thick thread, and to get this, a woman has to have her legs bound together for 40 days to even and it won't it will never look like this for anyone else this is a fluke now I want to go over the problems this causes now this does this goes this happens to seven-year-olds to ten-year-olds they go through this um, people have seen it from earlier ages so that it reduces trauma in your child and it reduces resistance. Parents want to do this so their children won't resist them when they grow older. This also happens in early adulthood and this happens in mothers right after they've had their first child. This happens to women of all ages. Now go on to slide 9 and I want to go over some of the medical problems this causes. This causes so many problems. HIV and STDs can be found mainly because these utensils are not clean. These utensils are still blood spattered, blood stained, and you are going to use them on every single individual who's going through this at the time. That could be up to 50 girls using these same utensils without them being cleaned. This also causes pelvic inflammatory, urinary tract infection, and this doesn't just happen during the procedure or a little time after pr the procedure. This happens for their entire life afterwards. This procedure really kills a woman from the inside out. It can kill you. And 13% of girls who go through this do die. They will die and they have died. I want to go on to the next slide, slide number, number 11. And this is going to go over some of the social causes why this is done. Mainly it's done out of tradition. Not a good enough reason for me. I don't care if you went through it and you feel your child needs to go through it. I know it is a hard fact that this is all they know but they need to know the people who go through this they need to know what the truth of it is about. Many people who have this done or have their children have this done to their children believe that their children are unclean Many women who do not have this done in tribes and villages in Africa that other people believe that they are unfit to handle water or food. They will poison this, this water and food if this is not done. Other problems are from the clitoris. Many believe that the clitoris, if touched by the husband or the child, is going to kill them. Not a, these are reasons that are not logical and found in places that are uneducated. Many believe that the wife is unfit to wed unless this procedure is done. Now, these are reasons, these are not good enough reasons, and these are uneducated reasons to do this. All in all, this procedure should not be done. It has no benefits to a woman's health, and it should be outlawed worldwide. Those who perform these procedures need to be educated they, about the dangers both mentally and physically because the ones who are getting this done are either too scared or too set in traditions to just say no to this procedure. And with that said, I'm going to conclude this. I hope that some of you out there may have a different outlook on this. 
and hopefully it's one for a good cause. Thank you again.